The San Juan Mountains of Colorado. Scraping the skies at 14,000 feet seemed like an impenetrable monolith. Yet they're broken by deep chasms, carved by the rushing waters over the eons, so deep that it seems like the rays of the sun cannot penetrate their depths. And while sunlight does indeed reach to the bottom in these dog days of summer, we're riding a different journey through these mountains where only the moon and light from the celestials can reach past. Today we're boarding the Durango and Silverton's 2024 Fall Photographer Special. And unlike the other ones we've been witness to, this one turns the clock. 12 hours. Instead of our normal early morning departure from Durango, we cross through those wrought iron gates of 6th Street at sunset making it to the volcanic depths of Silverton early the next morning. We'll steam under these peaks, including Twilight, a name apt for this journey, and keeping with the tradition of naming passenger trains. Calling this one the Twilight Peak Zephyr seems to be nary a stretch for this train. The darkness of the night will be shattered for the next two using portable professional lighting setups by Pete Laro one of the masters of the modern night railroad shoot, allowing us to capture both stills and actions of this railroad in, well, a whole new light. While the original plan had been to meet train 466 as it arrived in Durango, mechanical problems beset it with a later than planned arrival. So the Durango and Silverton staff, as the professional railroaders they are, swung the planned meet to Home Ranch, the first siding north of town in the Hermosa Valley. We hop back aboard the Twilight Peak Zephyr after our impromptu run past and begin the charge up Hermosa Hill towards Rockwood, the High Line, and our first stop, the High Bridge, the tallest span on the line.
Beyond the high bridge, we stop once again for an unplanned location. This time, from the mind of our engineer, we deboard at Cascade Canyon Y. But without the aid of our lighting setup, we enjoy the full-throated bark of the K-28 under the light of the waxing moon. We pause for a while at the long disused foam booth near the Bitterroot Mine for some static shots of the crew with Engineer Nick, Fireman Bobby, Conductor Russell, and Brakeman Brock posing for our still shots. Of course, without water, steam railroading would cease to be, and the Needleton tank is a must stop in both directions along this railroad. While the modern tank is just out of sight behind us, we focus on the original, classic Rio Grande water tank to the south. Needleton, we make another stop at Elk Park, and like the Cascade Canyon stop, a bit unplanned. But as not to awaken a sleeping hunting party camped near the tracks, we make this stop under the gaze of Mount Garfield, a static one.
We arrive into Baker's Park in the deep darkness of the night as we cross the Animus for the final time before Silverton. Today we cross on a new bridge that was completed in the spring of 2024, but the original timber bridge built atop the riverbed still remains in its waning days before removal. Arriving at the Silverton Depot, we've backed into the scale house track while leaving Caboose 540 on the main. The markers have been moved to the opposite end to give the appearance of two trains passing in the night. We'll leave the train here for the first night and return to Silverton the next evening after sunset to continue our journey back to Durango via rail. Departing Baker's Park that evening, our first stop is the bridge from the morning before, but we now stand on the eastern side of the span showcasing its new construction over the River of Souls.
Just north of Elk Park, we stop once again for a static shot. This time at the pond that marks the crossing of the Colorado Trail. A trail system stretching from Denver to Durango through the heart of the Centennial State. At the Needleton tank, we pause briefly to top off the cistern of the 473 before we drift onto Goblin Fire for another static shot, using the natural light of the moon to illuminate our train, the forest, and the Needle Mountains high above us. After Goblin Fire, we unload at Teft Bridge, just north of the Cascade Canyon Y, where we'll spend some time on this through truss steel bridge, one of two in service on the line, and the only one in the depths of the canyon still in service. We return to the high bridge and gingerly trapes through the brush from the track to river level as Pete illuminates this iconic scene.
We hop back aboard the train, and for the first time in years, the southbound train calls at Rockwood well before the dawn to pick up a couple of passengers for the journey to Durango. We'll enjoy the rest of the trip down the Hermosa Hill as the valley continues its slumber along with some of the train's passengers, while we pass through a late summer thunderstorm en route. I want to thank you for joining us on this unique take on the Silverton train. Be sure to click like and share with others if you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and check out some of the other content we offer here. Hey guys, you've reached the end of the video, but that doesn't mean you can't stop watching for more content. Make sure you click like and subscribe, and check out for more.